Hi there, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We're back with the Exchange by Evolution. I'm your host, Ritesh, and today we're going to be talking about the definition and the meaning of marketing in today's world. I have a very special guest with me, Mr. Ankesh, who is the head of marketing for Wakato, who's definitely going to be able to share a lot of his experiences with us. And, you know, just hope you can take it away and help us out with this topic. Mr. Ankesh, could you please go ahead and introduce yourself for us? First of all, thanks a lot, Ritesh, for giving me this opportunity to talk. And uh, I, I am Ankesh Sagar. Uh, I had marketing for Vakato. Uh, Vakato is a global leader into automation and integration space. And in total, I, I have experienced around 15 years and I work with large enterprises also. But in the last seven years, uh, I'm with the startups and more into automation space. Okay, great. Now, one thing that we would like to make very, very clear for this podcast as well is just as a little disclaimer, all the thoughts, opinions, perspectives that we have presented for you today only represent our very own thought and not of the companies in specific, okay? So we're just going to delve right into it um, and to start off a very generic sort of topic here or question here to start things off, which would be the actual definition of marketing, right? There's so many different definitions, but at the end of the day, we also need to look at the definition that marketing would be for a startup and that for a large enterprise, right? As well as the fact that now going into something post-COVID, it seems like marketing has merged quite a bit with sales. So what would we say is the actual true definition of the market of marketing in this world now? So I would say marketing is not like a one word. There are many things around a uh, marketing world. And it's a proper evolution process. So let's uh, let's divide marketing into four M's. Okay. Uh, one is market, second is message. Third is medium and fourth is measure. The first one market. And as a company, for every company, the market is very, very different. An enterprise versus a startup. Let's pick up a Singapore market. Okay. There's a market which is not a very big market as large countries, but it's a very strategic market for the company because a lot of companies who have a lot of revenue are part of this economy of Singapore. Mm -hmm. So for the large enterprises, they can target the companies like DBS, Singtel, Capital Land. But the startups have to target those companies which are emerging companies in Singapore, like Ninja Land, right? right? Uh, Property Guru, these are the next generation companies. And they're not the legacy companies of many, many years. So in that sense, the companies have defined their market, whom they want to target. Right. And when they say whom they want to target, they have to look at what type of vertical they're targeting, what type of personas they're targeting, what type of functions they're targeting. And that's how the marketing will evolve and a startup with the enterprise when they say, okay, which market we are targeting. Mm -hmm. So as part of the four M's, one is important, which is market. And that marketing definition changes market to market also. The same type of marketing which you're doing in Singapore, you cannot do in Indonesia. Right. Or same type of marketing you're doing in Indonesia, you cannot do in Korea. Mm -hmm. So similarly, the definition of market also changes. Mm -hmm. so that's one part of marketing. Right. The second part of marketing is basically that we have to define the messaging in the market because it is very important for people that when customers or prospects think that, okay, what is it for me? Someone says, oh, I'm the best in particular product or I'm very best in this particular offering. But at the end of the day, are you really understanding what is customer's pain point? What are the customer mm -hmm. challenges and how your product or solution is actually solving the pain point? And that's the marketing comes into the picture and tell you that, okay, how should I position my product right. in a particular market? And even most of the times, the positioning also changes market to market. Mm -hmm. So that's why market and messaging are connected. Right. You cannot look at them separately. And in the same messaging, you have to look at who's your competition right now mm -hmm. and what actually competition is also telling and how your messaging can actually counter that. And sometimes because at the end of the day, people should not feel like, oh, these two products are same. Right. You should come with that unique value proposition as part of the messaging itself. And the third piece, uh, which I talked about is medium. And that's the biggest misconception about people that people always feel like, oh, marketing is doing some marketing activities like events, webinars and all. Yeah. But out of these four pieces, you can see the third piece, which is medium. That is just one piece. And in one piece also, you have push versus pull. And there are many type of marketing activities you can do, which is offline, which is online, which yeah. is more customer, which is more PR activities. So there are multiple activities which you can do as part of the medium. Mm -hmm. It can be field marketing, it can be partner marketing, it can be digital marketing, 
it can be uh, public relations it can be analyst relations it can be customer marketing so there are multiple flavors of marketing within part of medium and what is medium basically how will you reach out to your customers or right. the method of doing something exactly right and right now gone are those days when you just do the activity actually the original marketer's job start when the marketing activity is over mm-hmm. because at, after that you have to start how will you follow up to the leads right. what is the roi of the activity right. and that's why your measure part comes and a startup sources enterprises the measure definition changes very very initial stage startups those startups are actually more focused on how many number of leads are you generating for that activity mm-hmm. and that's the one of the kpi which the marketers carry in those startups but in the enterprises it is more on the how you are helping as a deal catalyst to close the deal yeah how much revenue are you bringing from marketing so it depends on the stage of the company and as the stage of the company changes the measurement criteria of the marketing also changes so it's more about how you end up using the data that you've been able to accumulate um as opposed to the actual activity itself but how you end up using it to generate get your end goal if anything right for the activity itself but one thing and this is something you also mentioned which is how obviously it's not just about the actual activity now but what comes after i guess to some degree and i don't know whether you would agree or disagree on this would you say that the reason why this happens because of a lot of automation now especially with how marketing operations work everything is very automated to the point where us as marketers we don't have to do much until after the actual activity is done is it because of that so right now you can actually measure a lot of things if you look at few years back actually 6 8 years back automatically when your crm is not connected with your back end tools or your front end then it is very difficult to really track the entire customer journey right but now you can actually track the entire customer journey from end to end when the customer is a prospect versus when the customer signs the paper versus when the customer is really expanding uh, your product or your offerings into their own landscape right so all these things can be trackable okay and marketing can play a very crucial role in all these stages for example i know in some of the large enterprises there is a dedicated team for expansion right there's a, a dedicated team for upsell cross sell yeah. there's a team which does only focus on renewals when the customer renewal is coming so make sure that okay we do a lot of renewals marketing the customer is happy with us yeah that's part of our customer marketing portfolio so that depends actually multiple stages also and if you look at the entire marketing funnel or entire customer journey marketing is now having the touch point at every step step mm-hmm. and is due to the tools which we have available actually right now mm-hmm. the marketing automation which is available like you can track all the marketing activities and their performance there are over and then i think when you obviously mentioned all of this it's a lot more technical than what what you could probably call a stereotype is for what marketing is right the stereotype would be it's all about generating the leads as opposed to working with it or it's all about creating the content the design of aspect of things which we know it's not it's not always supposed to be what's considered to be your creative role all the time right what are your general thoughts on how that has all evolved or changed over the last say 5 years so i would say uh, during the pandemic time things have changed a lot because during pandemic time uh, the it was not that getting the new customers it was more about how can you retain your existing customers mm-hmm. and how can you actually understand your customer problems during the pandemic time and support them extend them for example most of the companies have not asked their say, customers to pay they said okay we can wait for you for 6 months or 8 months just to retain the customer because we know that customer is having a problem right now and you have to extend the you know olive branch for mm-hmm. those customers so at the end of the day it is that how you how much you understand your customer very well and during that uh, entire you know uh, covid uh, time this integrated marketing approach has become very very important so you might have many marketing teams you have a content team who is generating the content mm-hmm. you have a digital team who is promoting that content but are these two teams are sharing their best practices is digital team is telling that yes actually your this content is working very well versus your other contents yeah which type of people are downloading those content which country is actually pretty much active in that content and giving that feedback to the content guys and now there are tools available by which you can actually really track oh on which page the consumer or the customer is spend most time versus which case study is more famous yeah. what part of 
the document they are actually reading a lot and by doing that process the digital team can give feedback to content and content team actually you know intrinsically refine that and the major classic problem which comes uh, for the companies uh, who are part of this region who have a global headquarter there are a lot of content generates in the global head hq mm-hmm. but when the content comes to singapore or any other part of the epj region is that content relevant to the people here right because if that same content same white paper case study you are pushing a us company or a european company people might not be interested they will more interested to see some real life use cases or examples of this region right because they can really connect that yeah. and that's why con- content becomes more and more important but it has to be more localized mm-hmm. it has to be more specific to a particular persona specific to a particular use case because the the time span is very less to yeah. get that attention and once you lost that customer then you will to do a lot of efforts really to bring back and download or read your content yeah i think i remember reading something a while ago as well this was a few years ago now when it comes to content specific um with the way that social media works and everyone just scrolling about apparently it takes less than 1 second for someone's attention span to just go off from whatever it is you're trying to show them uh and i guess that really highlights the the main importance of how engaging content needs to be and localized as you mentioned but obviously we move away from the whole content side of things as well the leads aspect of things marketers now also need to know a lot about sales in terms of how to sell even the product knowledge itself product or solution knowledge how much has that changed or integrated with the actual role of a marketer nowadays so i always tell my team that uh, you have two stakeholders one stakeholder is obviously customers but another stakeholder is sales if we are not able to collaborate with sales then we are not doing enough marketing or we are not doing right marketing at the end of the day company needs revenue and who brings revenue sales yeah and marketing role is to collaborate with sales because sales are the people who are talking to customers day in day out things will not work if you are doing your marketing activities without even understanding what is the current market landscape what is the current customer landscape mm-hmm. and you should get that intelligence from your sales guys that oh what customers are talking about right what are actually going to, they are looking at it and then you can tune your campaigns around it mm-hmm. because if you look at linkedin just an example in linkedin you can do tons of targeting parameters are there you can really fine yeah. tune your entire campaign and then you can position your right content to the right people but how you decide that okay what is the right content go to the right people that intelligence will come from sales mm-hmm. and it's not that you just do that event and generate the leads and job is over after that when the sales go into the meeting with the customer what are the right assets content they should use there after that uh, multiple meetings happen with multiple stakeholders how can you target other stakeholders also in the same company through your marketing activities and again you can create a one joint story in that account to position your company in a better shape versus the competition and right. there your positioning piece comes your messaging piece comes so in all these activities the marketing should sit with sales and help them to actually understand because sales has multiple accounts they are very busy yeah and marketing we know that okay what worked well what didn't work well in the past we can give them that yeah intelligence from our side and help them to really close the deal and even after closing the deal also how can you take care of your customer to a customer marketing approach mm-hmm. simple example let's run a customer champions program where you can actually you know uh, start a program like employee of the month for any account Mm-hmm. where you can actually awarding an employee from the customer side for doing a good work appreciation yeah. for that right there's a customer anniversary you can celebrate and in those all these activities you can do some customized workshop for the customers some leadership trainings for the customer people yeah so at the end of the day it's not that you are just selling to the customer you are becoming a partner in that entire journey with yeah. and they should see you as a strategic partner and yeah. marketing will play a very very important role yeah I think it it works a lot more so when you look at B2B for something like that. Uh for example with us here at Evolution as a B2B we're doing recruitment right now obviously for that the whole aspect of it part of the transaction you have to build relationships with people to get them to trust you get them to trust the profile that you send to them as a candidate as well right? Um and so it's it's something that I'm going through right now. I'm still a junior in the world of marketing in the world of recruitment as well. but i'm already starting to notice a lot of things that you mentioned you know in the sense where i have to work with my sales team quite a lot develop new avenues for them and so i'm just developing those avenues whatever it is that we've done as an initiative take whatever data 
And because I'm a solo marketer here, I end up collecting all that data, analyzing it myself, and then I spread it back out. See what works, what doesn't work, where we can approach things and how we can change things up. And it's also something where obviously marketing and sales have to collaborate, but I think one thing that a lot of salespeople nowadays need to realize more so as well along with marketing is the fact that yes, they are the driving force in terms of the face of the company. They speak to clients, but they need marketing as much as we need sales. You know, they, they need to realize a lot of the time that they need to collaborate more and come up to you as a marketer and say, hey, what is this showing as a statistic or whatever it is? How can we improve? And, you know, I think if we move on from, from this whole aspect of the whole collaboration thing for it, in terms of how well we can drive a company with that, it brings toward the topic where, you know, companies nowadays, when it comes to their product and solutions, there is no specific company that's right at the top of the chain, right? Everyone is doing everything. Do you believe that this collaboration between marketing and sales alone can really drive companies beyond? And hopefully one day, I mean, this is probably not gonna happen as such, but reach the pinnacle, which would be as good as a monopoly, so to speak. So I would say, obviously monopoly is not possible in the current scenario yeah. because there are many companies are there and uh, well, all those companies have great talent and great products. Uh, but again, the same point, like going back to this four M's thing, which market you are catering? You will not sell, uh, you know, a Mercedes to a person who is just looking for a normal car. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it is all about how much you understand your customer problem. And then whether, whether they are looking for a really a Swiss knife or a kitchen knife to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And in that entire scenario, you can offer a customized solution to your client also. And that's why a lot of companies have different pricing mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Like if you want these type of activities, a platform, a one point solution, then the pricing changes. And the competition started, especially in the market like Asia, which is very much price sensitive market for a simple, uh, solution you can find a large company also which is giving that solution and you can find a small boutique firm which is also giving a solution but it depends on the what is a customer's uh, scale plan what is their vision about that particular activity and how will they think over the period of three to five years yeah. and that's why you have to partner with the right company because a lot of companies do this mistake they buy a software with a short-term horizon and after that after six months eight months when they want to steal that product, they cannot because it is not the functionality which is available in that product. So it is up to the customer choice right now because the options are there. Whether you want to buy a platform, you want to buy a product, you want to buy a one point solution, but it depends what do they want from that. And sometimes people oversell also, sometimes people undersell also. And that's why before selling to a customer, very important thing is ask questions. Ask many questions to a customer to really understand yeah like what are you no uh, what is your uh, plan right now why are you doing that how will it impact your business right now if you don't do that why now yeah why don't you deliver six months so understand that entire customer problem first and then give the solution rather than pushing your solution every day right and then when it comes to the actual targeting for these customers or consumers for a product solution a service whatever it may be um would a more aggressive approach be needed in these cases at times in terms of trying to push, like I said, not push your, your solution out there only, get to know the customer's problem, but would you say an aggressive uh, you know, method should still be done for this in terms of trying to find out that challenge, that problem? Or take a slightly slow, more subtle approach? Because at the end of the day now, you'll see a lot of consumers out there, they already know a few people or companies, organizations who they want to buy, who they want to work with. How do you get that attention? Yeah, very good question. And that's how the marketing actually automation comes into the play. And that's how the future of marketing is also going to, uh, we call it intent data. So basically as per serious decisions is a, is a, it's a firm which says that 70% of the buyers actually did enough research before they come to you. And that's why there are a lot of platforms where people read a lot. And that's why you cannot be aggressive in that sense, because you cannot push your sales pitch on day one. When someone is searching about to read something, so you should not talk about, oh, what are my offerings? You should talk about how actually, you know, we can solve that problem right now, what are the problems right now, what are the challenges, what companies are doing. Mm -hmm. And when you start that journey, so there's a content funnel also that when can you position your case study, when you should position your white paper, when you should position your blogs, 
but the constant messaging or constant push should go in that market that okay for example every month we should have two blogs on a particular theme particular topic and when the customer starts reading about it they get a perception about it then you can talk about what we can do so it's a content journey you cannot push your things from day one you cannot be so aggressive and pushing your own products you should put the normal thought leadership in material first and then slowly slowly build on top of it right and then alongside doing this obviously we've got to think about the different ways the different avenues in which we want to try and push whatever content in the in the most targeted way that we can right what would be the best platforms or the best ways for individuals to do this is social media still king or is there anything else so i don't see uh, any activity is a silo uh, i see that as an integrated approach so even if i'm doing an activity on linkedin and i'm generating some leads out of it i cannot expect like suddenly tomorrow i get something out right i have to nurture those leads and how the nurturing happens you do your own events you do some happy hour events you do some networking events you do some round tables you do some webinars out of it uh, you target them through some programmatic uh, programmatic display you target them through your own uh, media campaigns so it's proper like you generate hundred leads put them into a nurturing campaign and then that nurturing campaign you can push content also you invite them for your activities you invite them to speak uh, for some speaking sessions and that's how you build that relationship so enter relationship process because at the end of the day the person who is buying is not a company is a human is an individual or is a collection of some individuals mm-hmm. and understand one thing that they are also bound to take some decision but when will they take the decision when they really understood your product right. understood your company understand your company's vision whether you can really collaborate with them for next 2 3 4 5 years right and how it happens when you constantly tell them about your story about other customer story so for example if you do a uh, one normal drink happy hours mm-hmm. in those events you should bring your other customers and prospects to sit together and discuss because customers love other customer stories they are not interested to listen your offering your pitch yeah. they are more interested to see what their other peers are doing in the market who are the other people who are facing the same challenges and how they overcome it mm-hmm. so that's why you to create a platform where your customers and prospects can talk to each other and that's called we call it a community building you have to build a community you have to build a user community uh, in countries or in the region but it can be virtual it can be physical but the community model is very important right and i'm going to i'm going to take something uh out of your book here from what you had said as well in terms of the way that you end up getting a lot of these people as well comes out of through how you localize your company in terms of what it is that you push out to them how you push things out to them what are the best ways to try and localize a company to say a new region that it's just trying to move into so there are multiple ways there's nothing but a best way thing but right. for some companies some things work uh, what i feel right now is any region where you go you should look at the areas where your target audience visit so let's pick up example like thailand okay so pick up those thailand uh, you know uh, academies or what you call websites where people go to consume content and then create some joint content with them in thai like the good example is a website called tech talk thai so it is pretty much famous uh, place lot of companies were you know will work with them they do lot of webinars they do lot of events and they also help you to generate some local content and they have a large reach mm-hmm. so you have to identify those two three platforms where people go and consume content and like for example in korea you should talk to et news and then start going there and talk that local language local case studies local examples mm-hmm. that's one thing second thing do activities with your partners because those partners are those companies which are there for many many years and you are the new to that particular country your partners know better than you right so do some joint activities with those partners and convey your messaging there because when the partner goes and tell that oh i knew this product and we have done the training and all those partners are the trustable you know uh, sources for the companies because they know them very well mm-hmm. so another thing is partners third thing i think you should collaborate with some universities some academic institutions and start teaching or telling them about that particular topic you cannot push your product for example if you are a marketing automation company you should talk about what is the future of marketing automation right and start training people on a particular product 
uh, do some free certifications where people know your product first. Right. So essentially, work more towards the educational aspect of things first, gauge the interest, continue to nurture through that, yeah. and then push out the solution as a form of selling. Yes, yeah. yeah. You were probably better than me. <laughs> I think um, one thing also that I need to do as well on my podcast generally is I like to throw out a couple of questions here, um, which will not be directly part of the topic in itself. But I would want to know your thoughts as well. What the difference is like for marketing within tech specifically, as opposed to you know other industries. What are the key differences that you would find? I would say uh, it's a thin line actually, and that line is getting blurred day by day because it is more now personalization. The difference comes when we talk about pitching into a B two B versus B two C. B two C is more target to an individual right now. and it can be more impulse buying and then the customer can actually switch the brands also easily uh, versus in b2b it is more large ticket size and you have to convince lot of people to make one deal and at the end of the day it is more on how you are solving the customer pain point and challenges because it is not a customer pain point uh, as an individual it is a company's problem right but in the b2c it is more on likes in the user profiling what they like what they dislike so it's not a problem we are solving right we are actually helping them to grow better mm-hmm. so the the uh, objectives are different that's why the approaches are different that's why you go to personalization in b2c where for example you are uh, uh, searching about something on internet and suddenly you start getting offers that's more user profiling and they know everything about you what you eat what you don't eat yeah. where you visit where you don't visit Versus in B two B, it is more on company's vision. What are they planning to do in next one year, and where your product can fit into it. Right. Okay. And I guess what when it comes to the way that obviously differentiate B two C and B two B, how it's changing now, but at the same time, there's a blurred line between everything. When we look at things from that perspective, for every marketer, what would you say are the three key things to focus or learn? In order to be successful in the type of project or initiative you take on, hmm, good question. <laughs> let me let me think. I think the first thing is about learn about your product. Okay, you should know what you are selling. Right. At any given point of time, a marketer should be able to stand in front of a customer and sell and and pitch about the product. Because whatever the events you do, wherever you go. If you jump into a customer, it should not happen. Oh, let me call my sales guy. No, you should be able to have that conversation with that customer then and there, because you will never get a second chance to make your first impression. Right. And that's why the marketer should understand the product. Second thing I would see in current scenario, the marketer should understand their tech stack. What technologies are they using, and how can they get maximum out of that? I have I've seen many people they say oh we are depending on marketing ops as a field marketer to generate my sales force reports it should not happen you you should learn your own crms you should know how to generate the right reports in sales force and what are the insights you can derive from that report so you should understand your uh, marketing stack and how can you connect that marketing stack how can you run those campaigns and get those reports to really come to that last m which was measure part Mm-hmm. so that in your meetings to your sales to your cmo to anyone management you can actually tell that oh i did that and we have got this results whether it can be direct or whether it can be indirect so first thing is learn about your product uh, second is uh, uh, learn about martech stack and third thing talk to people what i mean when i say talk to people it is both internal and external yeah. you cannot work in silos you have to talk to the people who are outside your company and who are doing marketing because then you can build your own network also and you will understand the best practices what's happening in the market you cannot be in a shell and similarly when you talk to your people internally you will get a lot of ideas from those people who are not marketers but they also heard somewhere they have seen somewhere and they might tell you something unique idea which you never thought of. so it's very important for you to network both internally and externally right okay and I think just to end things off as well. In terms of obviously you've already given the three main aspects of things that people should probably learn about or know. What is your biggest piece of advice for any person who is joining the world of marketing today? 
just just one thing which i just missed in the last comment oh, sure. internally and externally you should talk when i say internally externally internally you should talk to your sales talk to your customer success talk, talk to your product team talk to your engineering team anyone in the company who is actually you know looking for a common goal and those people might be customer facing might not be customer facing but you should talk to them and see what inputs you can get from them to support your own function yeah sorry and then the piece of advice for yeah. anyone to think uh i would say read a lot read a lot on on google there are so many things are there on google where which you can learn follow some uh, marketing companies like the best company which i can see right now is hubspot hubspot or google uh, they really generate a lot of good content in marketing side so please or linkedin these are these are the places where you can get tons of content so read a lot and uh, build your own community uh, follow some uh, good people on linkedin you can see a lot of cmos are there on linkedin you can follow uh, read their content pieces they are generating a lot of good content uh, follow some influencers basically consume a lot yeah so be a consumer to learn how to sell to a consumer <laughs> yeah. okay that anyway guys that's all it is for today's episode i hope you guys enjoyed if you're still you know listening watching at home or even on the go be sure to click subscribe and follow up depending on which platform you're on we'll see you next time once again thank you very much on cash it was very very insightful i definitely learned a lot i enjoyed it a lot and i could also relate to what you were saying as well thanks a lot for the thanks a lot thank you so much bye bye so thank you all for coming see you next time goodbye